There's perfect timing in the universe, and our arrival on earth was a part of that synchronicity. In other words, we were an idea of God's whose time had come. This chapter introduces the concept of perfect timing and how to believe in it, notice it, tune into it, and apply it. Faith banishes all doubt. We know that ego has virtually no control over what happens to us. Our body grows, develops, changes, and declines independent of ego's desires or opinions. We know that eventually we'll shed this garment we've been wearing for a lifetime, not when our ego decides, but when that idea's time has come. You see, we must have faith in a universe that's created and guided by an intelligence greater than our ego, one where there can be no accidents. When an idea's time has come, it can't be stopped, but by raising our vibration to match that of the universal source of being, we can bring about that idea's time. We can raise our level of consciousness from ego and group dominance to what I call visionary consciousness, in which we reconnect to the mind of God. We banish all doubt by our knowing, which is a higher level of consciousness than believing. Our vision is God's vision, in a manner of speaking. When we banish all doubt in favor of faith, there's nothing more powerful on this planet. You must believe, and then you'll see it unfolding right before your eyes. Co-creating with spirit. Keep in mind that we can't co-create with anyone, including our spiritual source, unless we're in a place of harmony. To that end, we must suspend our false self, the ego, and stop all thoughts of resistance before we can participate in creating the inspired life we desire, in perfect symmetry with spirit. Whatever we ask of our source in our prayerful communion will no longer be a wish or a hope. It will become a reality in our mind, just as it is in the mind of God. The how and when of its arrival, which have always troubled ego, are no longer issues. We maintain our optimism and thoughts such as, I desire it, it's in harmony with my source, or it's on its way, there's nothing to fuss about, and then we can relax and surrender to our knowing. Again, as Ernest Holmes reminds us, the thing we surrender to becomes our power. I know that the term surrender is generally associated with defeat, but there's no victor or victim when surrendering to God. This isn't about winning or losing. You see, what we're doing here is giving up our false self in favor of returning to our authentic self. And when we do, we'll meet our spiritual creator and become empowered to live in the same vibration with it. We'll become co-creators by surrendering and joining the all-knowing, all-creating force that allows everything to come into existence. Then our knowing replaces our doubts, and divine will prevails at all times. Only now, we're in harmony with that divine will. There's an old saying, fear knocked at the door, and faith answered, and no one was there. Fear stems from doubts we have about our divinity. The antidote to fear is faith. I know within that I am not alone, ever. I know that I have divine guidance available to me at all times. This inner knowing makes fear impossible. You too are not alone. And you also have omnipresent guidance accessible at will. When you truly know that the loving presence is always with you, the possibility of living with both doubt and fear evaporates. This is a belief that you can't get from another person. It has to have the quality of being a knowing. Then the notion of fear vanishes. When we're ready, willing, and open to it, the divine guidance we seek will spring into action on our behalf. It has been that way throughout our life. We're in a system that's directed by a supreme intelligence, and we're part of that system. Everything is on purpose. Our vibrational matchup determines what we attract and what we repel in our life. We needn't focus on what's already happened and what we've gone through. Rather, we must shift our vibration upward so that it harmonizes with spirit, and then and only then will spiritually-based ideas come knocking on our door. These ideas won't give up or go away because, as we know, there's nothing in this universe more powerful than an idea whose time has come. Our responsibility is simply to become beings who expect and await inspired ideas that will not and cannot be stopped. Truly, there's absolutely nothing in this universe, including ourselves, that isn't perfectly timed. There are no wrongful deaths or mistakes. What shows up is ours, and it showed up precisely on schedule. I'd like you to think about the simple wisdom that the former slave and philosopher Epictetus 
imparted to us nearly 2,000 years ago. It is my business to manage carefully and dexterously whatever happens. Now there's a powerful idea whose time has come. <laughs>